Vasey and Zach Woodchow appear on behalf of the state of Wisconsin. Sir, would you please state your name for the record? I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter. The parent is authorized representative for my client. I accept the value and return the value of all of the charges instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments, and for the record, I do not consent to being called that name. The record should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody. He is in street clothes, wearing a suit and tie and a mask. I don't consent to being called that name, Your Honor. I understand, sir. For the record. And I have advised you previously that I will continue to refer to you at times by that name, as I believe it's appropriate given the charging instruments in this case and other evidence now that's been received during the course of this trial where I believe we are using the accurate name. With that, I do need to... I don't agree to that, Your Honor, or consent to that. Your lack of consent is noted. So before we... ...a couple of things on the record. I know Mr. Brooks has filed some things, but before I get to that, as I told the parties on Monday, I had excused one of the jurors for a health reason, and it has come to my attention that I now have a second juror with the same health concern. Out of an abundance of caution, I am going to bring the jurors out to question them about their... ...whether any of them have any concern about continuing to serve on this jury, given the health concern. I am referring to a COVID concern. I'm not going to ask any particular juror whether they've tested positive or not, or whether they've had an exposure. I think I... But I am going to ask them questions about their willingness to continue serving, whether it's interfering at all with their ability to pay attention. Out of an abundance of caution, we have brought in two air purifiers, although I am told that because of the new building and the HVAC that's in this building, and I received this from our facilities manager, the new HVAC system in the Quartz Tower has a UV light system that disinfects the air at a higher air exchange rate than the purifiers, and that the system was specifically designed so that no special standalone systems are needed. But again, out of an abundance of caution, we've had two air purifiers put in this courtroom. I'm putting a third one in the jury room. We have also provided jurors, should they wish, with masks. We've increased the hand sanitizers and the disinfecting wipes. We've always had the hand sanitizers around. There's one on the jury box at the moment, and they've been in the jury room. I'd also like to put on the record that I did advise the jurors on Monday that one of the jurors was not going to be with us any longer due to a health concern. I asked them at that point if anyone had any concern. I did indicate at that point it was a possible exposure, and they all indicated no, they didn't have any concerns. But again, out of an abundance of caution, I feel it's important to now question them while they're in the jury box to ensure that there aren't any issues related to that. So with that, I am going to instruct the jurors to be brought out for that purpose, and then they'll be excused after that so we can continue the discussion regarding that and then deal with, if need be, the other issues and filings that have been brought to my attention today. No, not at this time. I don't know if the audio is on, but... Oh, 
all right for the jury. Could you have a microphone available, please, if oh. need be? They're behind you. I don't know if you can see it. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I brought you out here. We are uh, not taking testimony at the moment. I have made a record previously uh, regarding um, COVID-related concerns with the jurors. I know you are all aware that one juror was excused uh, due to a health concern. I also put on the record that on Monday when I advised the jurors of that, I asked you all if um, anyone had a concern regarding that and that no one indicated they had a concern. Um, I have been made aware of a second um, issue uh, and potential exposure. And so I wanted to make a record in open court and to ask each one of you if any of you have any concerns about continuing your service in this case due to exposure to uh, COVID. And so I'm just going to go uh, through each one. Um, probably, hopefully I can see all of your numbers from here. I'll just start uh, from the back row and move from my left to right, front row, my left to right. And um, I also want to let you all know uh, we have a very, very good um, HVAC system. I made a record of this while you were not here. Um, but this is a new building. It has brand new technology. I've been told that the HVAC system in the Quartz Tower, and this was told to me by our uh, facilities manager, um, has a UV light system that disinfects the air at a higher air exchange rate than purifiers, but out of, out of an abundance of caution. And I've had two air purifiers also put in this courtroom, and I've had one put in um, the jury room. I believe you would be able to confirm for us as well that when you got into the jury room this morning, there were extra sanitation supplies along with masks. And so with that, I am just going to identify you by number. Uh, first of all, juror number 11, um, do you have any concerns about continuing your service in this case uh, specifically related to COVID? No concerns. All right. Thank you. Uh, let me actually go back to you. Would, do, has it, uh, would the fact that you may have been exposed in any way um, interfere with your ability to pay attention uh, and ultimately render a verdict in this case. No. All right, thank you. And then, let's see, I know our bar is really, juror number 48, if you could also answer those two questions. Uh, no concerns, both ways. All right, thank you. And then juror number 46. No concerns. Thank you. Juror number 34. No Thank you. Juror number 27. No. Thank you, juror number 30. No concerns to both. Thank you, juror number one. No concerns to both. Thank you. And then what's your number? Six. Six, juror number six. Uh, no concerns to both. Thank you. And then juror number 14. I'll just start there. No concerns to both. Thank you, juror number 10. No concerns to both. Thank you, juror number 51. No concerns to both. Thank you, juror number 45. No concerns to both. Thank you, juror number 19. Thank you, juror number 41. No Thank you, and juror number three. No concerns at all. All right, is there anything I haven't asked of the jurors or any other concerns related to that that you would want to bring to my attention? If so, just raise your hand. There are no hands raised. I can also tell you um, uh, from our initial days of COVID when we started up jury trials, we do have plexiglass panels that I could put in between anyone who would want one. Um, is there anyone here who would want that? If so, raise your hand. No hands are, are raised. Um, that's really all I have. I don't know if there's anything either the parties would want me to ask the jurors from the state no, on this topic. All right, Mr. Brooks. All right. Thank you. I'm going to excuse the jurors then, and then um, when we're ready, we'll have you brought back out. And thank you so much.
Thank you. Be seated. Judge, can we ask a question? Go ahead. We counted 15 jurors in the courtroom. I excused one. Uh, you excused one earlier in the week, too, though. No, no, no. I'm only talking about the one. The oh. other one I didn't excuse. I see. Um, and, okay. And, and thank you. I'll make a record of that. I, I did not excuse given when that person reported their symptoms and where we're at today. So it would be. So that person is here. Yes. And, and willing to continue serving. Yes. Okay. Thank yes. you. Sure. Um, and I will make a further record that none of the jurors are wearing masks. Um, and um, I'm not going to mandate. I believe it's a personal choice. Um, and that would also be consistent with, I believe, our county policies as well. So unless there are anything related to that, I have a couple of other issues I need to address this morning. Go the ahead. person that's, or the two people rather, that that are having the COVID concerns, um, I know you said you wasn't going to ask them uh, had they test positive or the results of any testing. Uh, do you know? Do you know if there has been exposure on their end to COVID exactly, or is that just a caution thing? Um, my understanding is that I've had two jurors test positive throughout the course of this. Program. And and I'd make a further record that they're the only ones within six feet of each other. Right, they and perhaps our civilian bailiffs, um, and uh, they've not been in obviously contact with anyone in the gallery. They, I don't know if maybe Attorney Opper might be within six feet. Um, I don't think so, but I haven't measured it. Obviously, you're not within six feet of any of them. Um, but that's a good question to ask, and I'm glad you asked that. And I, I wanted to make a record of that as well. Yeah, that's that would be my question to it um, I guess in reference to uh, me myself just having the same concern uh, a few weeks ago so that that would be the reason why I would want to know exactly any details that could be provided I'm providing all the details that I will um, again for the record you have not been exposed, from my opinion, because of the distance that you are away from them and my understanding based upon my review of county policy. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying I, me, myself, have been Understood. exposed. Well, that's why I asked them, though, too, right? I wanted to make sure they had no concerns or if they had a concern to see if I could accommodate it in any way. Um, I'm satisfied that if they don't have a concern, that we can continue forward. Have they ever, the entirety of the jury though, have they been exposed in any way? I don't know the specifics because of the six foot right rule and um, no one has asked me to investigate that further. Wouldn't it be smart though to see? Um, I don't believe that's necessary under the circumstances. Well, if anything, just for future reference like what if it plays a part later on well I'll certainly take your concerns under advisement and if I believe any further questioning needs to be done I'll do that at this point I, I don't believe it needs to be done but I'll think about that and I'll take it under advisement and if I change my mind I'll let you know yeah I'm just saying you know because if anything it, it probably would be smart for the long run to make sure no one else was compromised considering that let me make yeah. a record there. No one has indicated they are compromised. I don't think we can make assumptions about how anyone who's been exposed or tested is feeling. You can be asymptomatic and test positive. You can have mild symptoms. I trust my jurors that they would report if they're not able to sit through the proceedings. And I will, but I will further advise them through the bailiffs that they are to report any, if they ever get to a point where they feel they're not able to sit through here. And if, um, so that we're advised and I can tell the parties. Yeah, that's what I was referring to because it went from Monday, which at that time it wasn't known. Could have been flu, could have been just not feeling well, could have been anything. And then today is, then you kind of worry about 
tomorrow, Friday, over the weekend. Mr. Brooks, I share all of those concerns. But my other concern is that we are in the third <clears throat> week of trial and that we should keep going until uh, the conclusion of this matter, understanding uh, what has happened. All right. I just wanted to put that on the record because I appreciate that. It seemed like the circumstances were different when it was me. Just, just saying. Are you making any specific requests given this information? Well, I, I believe that the jury clearly all congregate together. I think it would be smart to make sure everybody is tested. I mean, that, that's that's it would be smart to do that I'm not going to mandate testing for the jurors that much I can tell you so that request is denied and the grounds for the denial I'm not going to mandate that the jurors be subjected to testing they're the ones who indicated they are comfortable being here they don't have concerns and again I would trust them to report to me if anything changes that too, but it would be, it still would refer back to Monday when the first knowledge of someone having an illness or a potential illness <clears throat> was those same questions that were asked today, asked Monday. Um, I did I'm, not. I'm quite sure. I certainly questioned them much more. <clears throat> for, I, it was a very brief. I put what I said to them on the record earlier. It was certainly not what we did here today, and the record reflects that. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure, though, that all the jurors Monday said they didn't have any concerns as well. And then now today, someone else. Same thing being said. So I understand what you're saying. If it happens again, same thing being said. But are you making any specific requests as it relates to this topic and this issue? Well, you denied the request that. Any other requests? I just feel like it's smart for them to be tested, so it doesn't so it doesn't come up again in the future or potentially come up again in the future because then it's. We'll all be looking back and saying, well, we could have prevented something like this from happening if we had to just nipped it in the bud from the get go. It's just it's just smart to, like you say, err on the side of caution. I appreciate that. I'm going to continue. I understand what you're saying. Um, but given the responses of the jurors today, I'm going to continue. I'm going to base this off of their desire to continue, at least what I would interpret as their desire to continue with their service on this case. All right, then I want to talk briefly about um, the jury view. I did provide the parties with um, a proposed instruction. Before I get to that, though, Mr. Brooks, I have been thinking about your request yesterday. Um, and I know I indicated to you that I would require you to be there. I've rethought that. I've had the overnight to really think about it. And um, if that is your decision to not be present for that, um, what I would say is this. You, I want you to be advised that you have a right to be at that jury view. Did you hear me say that? Yeah, I mean, you pretty much told me... Uh yesterday about you know everything that was going on I just didn't I didn't agree to or consent to it being well I was still confused about why did there even need to be a jury view that was my whole thing I, I didn't I don't see the the relevancy of it and I also didn't agree with agree with or consent to having to be part of something that I don't see as relevant I appreciate you making a record of that, but did you hear what I said, that you have a right to be present for it? I've ruled that where, let me back up. There's been a request from the state to have the jury look at the vehicle that was recovered by the police and, of course, is alleged to be the vehicle that was driven through the parade. Did you hear me advise you of that? Yes, I heard. All right, so that motion was addressed previously, and I granted the request for that jury view. Did you hear me say that? Uh, I'm informed. All right, thank you. So with that, you have a right to be present at that jury view. Did you hear me say that? I'm informed. And 
Um, I would like you to be there. I believe it is a piece of evidence. That's why I've uh, drafted jury instruction 152 the way that I did. Did you hear me say that? I'm informed. So my question to you then this morning is, do you want to be present at the jury view of the vehicle? Uh, I, I don't see the reason why I would need to be present. Well, that's my question to you, though, is do you want to be present for it? You are the accused in this case. You're the person who the state has alleged committed these acts. It's the jury view will be to view a piece of evidence that frankly can't come into the courtroom due to its size and the jury is going to be shown that so do you want to be present at that for the record I'm not a person I'm a human being and uh, no I do not consent to or agree to being present at a jury view all right, then I'm going to honor his request, but what I am going to do, though, is as part of that process in any event, because it's being done in a secure location, is um, I have ordered that a, a, I want to make a record of what's being done, and I want a visual record of what is being done. And so this jury view is going to take place in the Sally Port of the jail and precautions are being taken so that the jurors do not know where it's at. Um, it, they'll just, it'll look like a garage, right? Anything that says jail within the Sally Port is being covered up. That will be verified before anyone is taken in there. They will be transported to there. Um, it's, I'm not sure if they'll walk or drive because it's very close. Um, but then I, the Sheriff's Department, because um, it's, as the court official, I'm in charge of keeping the record, not keeping the record, I'm in charge of making the record, is the better way to say it. And I want to make sure that there's a record of what is done for this trial and certainly for any appellate purposes, if need be. <coughs> the Sheriff's Department, excuse me, the Sheriff's Department is obviously charged with the security and safety of a courtroom, including the jurors. And so I have asked the Sheriff's Department to record and so there is a camera with, uh, that will be on a tripod that will record what's there before anyone gets there. I've instructed them to take that camera to walk around the vehicle and while it's recording to put it back on the tripod and th before um, the jurors and the court are brought in. Once we are brought in, it will also be recorded and that contemporaneous recording, um, so that will be as uh, I will walk, uh, we will walk around the vehicle uh, one time, that will be recorded, and then both of those recordings are going to me be made part of the record. Um, because the second recording is for the record and has the jurors, um, at this point I'm going to seal it uh, so that uh, at least until the conclusion of the case, given the order that I have regarding the uh, what's referenced as an anonymous or numbered jury. So that will be sealed. Um, but what will be released to the uh, public or be made part of the public record, and so therefore any media request, would be that recording that just shows the vehicle without the jurors in it and without the court. So, And then I plan on also bringing that back to the courtroom while the Sheriff's Department's going to bring it back, and then we'll show it to you at that time. Question, though. Um, Go ahead. If if I have a right to be present, then I have a right to not be present. How can this take place if I don't agree or consent to being present? How can it even still take place without uh, without it, me? It will take place, sir. I'm just going to honor your request not to be wow. there asking a question though how can it take place without my consent or agreement if you don't it's going to take place that's how I'm going to answer that sir so you not going there is not going to prevent it from happening My Lord, is, is, but you can forfeit your right or to be there I by your conduct and by I your didn't. conduct by not answering my question by saying I don't want to be there and I don't consent to it 
um, you will be forfeiting your right to be present and essentially waiving that. Doesn't, that, doesn't I have to sign something for it to be waived? Um, I don't think so in this case. Well, yesterday you said something about... Uh, uh, I know I said that, and I've yeah, had some time yeah. to think about that further, um, and um, I don't believe I need to take a full waiver with you signing anything or even agreeing to the waiver. Um, so why did I have to do that for when my... Uh, I'm not going to answer those questions because that would we, be for me to give you um, an explanation of the law. Um, no. I'm just going just to be, tell you that I'm not going to require a written waiver mm -hmm. from you in order to honor your request to not be at the, or even if I phrase it, your lack of consent to the jury view. And is that lawful law because... Sir, I'm, I'm not going to go through all the law that applies to that. This I, is my ruling. If you disagree with it and ultimately there is a conviction, you can raise that on appeal. But no, your lack Your of consent is not going to stop the jury view. It's it, going to happen. It's a piece of evidence that I cannot physically fit in this courtroom. It's too big. It, there's no way to get it in. Okay, I'm informed of that. But at the same time, if I haven't signed any waiver, how could it be lawful? I haven't given consent or agreement to a jury view. I haven't waived any right. The, when the whole issue was brought up, on the record yesterday, my first thing that I said was, I don't see the relevancy of why there should even be a jury view. And that was the whole issue. And yesterday I was told about the, I don't know how you say it, the colloquy or however you say it. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I know Which what was, I said. And yeah. I'm telling you I had time to reflect. That was my initial reaction to your statement yesterday but i've thought about it some more and i'm changing my mind um so I, you, I don't believe i need to take a full waiver with a colloquy with you and anything in writing i'm advising you you have the absolute right to be there but i'm also advising you that if you choose not to be there i will honor that request um And I'm not going to force way. you. I'm not going to. I'm not going to direct the sheriff's department to, you know, use any type of, of force, if you will, or require you or get you there without your consent. You either cooperate with that process or you don't. The way I interpret the law, though, Your Honor, which the law is designed for to be interpreted by the people. The way I interpret that is, I have the right or essentially to be there or not to be there and it still has to be an agreement or consent that's how i interpret the law my ruling on that sir is i disagree with you you do not need to provide consent uh, for the jury view to happen your objection is noted for the record i'll make a specific finding today that it is relevant uh, to these proceedings to this trial there is an allegation that you drove through the um, Waukesha Christmas Parade on November 21 of 2021, driving a red Ford Escape, killing and injuring, uh, killing six and injuring dozens more. The relevance is that there is, in addition to the charges, there's an enhancer that has been charged as it relates to the intentional homicide charges and the first degree recklessly endangering safety, that you committed those acts while using a dangerous weapon. I would direct your attention to the meaning of a dangerous weapon, that uh, the legal definition that was provided to the jurors in the preliminary jury instructions, and that the jury view um, is uh, related to the evidence that the state is presenting uh, regarding the charges and specifically uh, the instrumentality that they allege is the dangerous weapon. So there's clear relevance of this vehicle as and has evidentiary value. Uh, again, your objection is noted for the record, um, but I will uh, and am permitting the jury view of the vehicle. With that, I'm going to give the. I'm going to move on to the jury instruction. Um, I don't agree or consent to that, Your Honor. I understand if, your if objection not, is well noted for the record. I, I need to keep going though on the pattern and jury. I'm informed that you pattern. need to keep going. I'm not trying to stop you from continuing to go. I'm. I'm. 
merely stating for the record that there are things I do not understand how they will be how they are being permitted versus the Constitution. I mean, I'm I'm sure you're you're aware under Article Six, Chapter Two about the Supremacy Clause that the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. So how can we disregard? Mr. Brooks, I'm not disregarding the Constitution. I've well, made I have... my, here's the thing, I've made my ruling, okay? Once I've made a ruling, I do expect that even if you disagree with it, you're gonna, you will not continue to argue it. It's not that argument. we will continue on I'm with the next to topic. I'm seeking understand, Your Honor, it's not an argument. Mr. Brooks, I, I'm not going to explain further other than what I have done, my ruling. My ruling stands. Now, I'm going to move on to the jury instruction. I gave the parties two documents. May I respectfully reject that ruling and take exception um, to that ruling? Your objection is noted. I'm for the moving record, on may to I jury request a legal or factual basis for Mr. your Brooks, ruling, Your Honor? Mr. Brooks, please don't interrupt me, Okay. I gave I give you an opportunity to raise your objections and to make your legal arguments, I'm raising and then I make a now. ruling, and then you start in on something else. You need to give me your argument all at once. For you to interrupt me afterward is disruptive to me. It's not disruptive, and it's it's interrupting and it's disruptive. It is definitely not disruptive. Well, if that's my view of things, sir, and. What I'm putting on the record is that it does disrupt what I'm doing and the flow of what I'm doing and needing to move on, having to interrupt what I'm doing so that I can address that once again. Please, please, I know you may not always agree with my rulings, but I'd ask that you show the courtesy and decorum that is expected of everyone. And once I make a ruling, we're going to move on. You don't need to keep objecting because your objection's already been noted for the record. I'm going to continue. We're going to look at jury instruction 152. Well, I, still, I gave the parties two documents yesterday. One was the pattern instruction, um, which I've modified, and then one is the draft of, and I'm, Mr. Brooks, please stop. You're, you're continuing to talk over me. Because you didn't, you're interrupting. You, didn't, you said I have the right to object, and you didn't let me even get to the objection. I, I did, sir. No, you okay. didn't. I was still, I was My, right Your in the objection comes before the ruling, not after. Once I make a ruling, we're moving on. You made a ruling before we even finished the conversation, Your Honor. With all due respect, <laughs> Brooks, before, please, before we stop. even finish. That's not true. Okay? You said it's not I'm going to make a ruling as soon, as soon as you even started in about uh, Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to spend to hours on end making a ruling about a jury view on something I've already decided. All right. So please, I'm asking well, you to stop. Stop no, interrupting this, me. You can't, and please you can't listen. just disregard the United States Constitution. Which I, has a I absolutely clause. am not disregarding the you United are, States you, Constitution or the Constitution of, of the state Your of Wisconsin. Honor, are you not a public servant? Okay, Mr. Brooks, you're you're starting to cross the line. You've already crossed it, but I want to keep going. I, I want you in this courtroom. Line. But if you keep interrupting me and putting you on notice that um, it's, you are you run the risk of being uh, forfeiting your right to be present in this courtroom and continuing in the next courtroom so that I can effectively and without interruption continue with the proceedings this so again, morning. So again, you're holding me in contempt. All right. Jury instruction 152, has the state had an opportunity to review it? Is that a judicial determination that I'm being held in contempt? And I agree generally with the court's um, proposed instruction. I did submit kind of a counter proposed instruction following uh, much of the language that you had in your uh, version, Your Honor. I, I just think it's maybe better to refer to this area as a garage instead of a sally port. I don't know that anybody knows what a sally port is unless they work in this industry. And um, instead of referring it as being in the Waukesha County Jail, I just suggested uh, a garage attached to the Waukesha County Courthouse. I think that is factually accurate and would dispel any concerns about anybody being in custody or reference to a jail setting. I did email my proposed instruction to your clerk and I e-filed it, but I admittedly just did that uh, a few minutes ago. So that's why I emailed it to the clerk because it's probably not in your queue yet. All right, why don't we print that off so that Mr. Brooks can review that as well. I seem to be in court that name. What do I need to be reviewing? The state has submitted an alternate 
proposal for instruction 152. And that's referring to this quote unquote jury view? Yes. Thank you. I set for value and return for value this document. And I would like the rec record to reflect. I still haven't uh, received my original copies of my filings here this morning. With the timestamp. Let me know when you've had an opportunity to review it, if you so choose. I just stated for the record, I set for value and return for value the document. Do you have any position on the state's proposal? I'm, I'm still trying to understand the whole process. Mr. Brooks, my question to you is, do you have any position on the state's proposed jury instruction? Otherwise, I'm uh, going to rule on their request. You're going to rule on the request anyway. I got a lot of questions that don't get answered. I have to rule on the request, sir. It's been a proposal filed with the court. You haven't ruled on subject matter jurisdiction yet. Yes, I have. No, you In haven't. any event, do you have a position on the jury view, sir? Yeah, what about subject matter jurisdiction? One last time, Mr. Brooks, do you have a position on can the I, state's Can I go proposed... over the document, please? Can I do that, Your Honor? Respectfully, for the record, may I do that? It seemed like the same the same thing that was there yesterday. It's not. There are some changes. What what changes? Reference it's it's to the same the, it's the same document. That was reference to accepted for value and returned for value yesterday. The same document. It's not the same. The changes were put on the record verbally by the state. Um, it's taking out reference to Sally Port of the Waukesha County Jail. Um, referring to it simply as a garage attached to the Waukesha County Courthouse. Those would be in the first two paragraphs. I believe the rest is the same. So it was a couple words changed. That's my understanding. So it's the same document. Let me know when you're finished reviewing it and I don't, have I don't have to review the same document that was reviewed yesterday, except the value and return for value yesterday. All right, then let me ask you this, sir. Do you have a position on the proposed instruction from the state? It's essentially the same document. We needed to, what, what was the significance of the change? What, what's the significance, garage, Sally Port, what, what, is, what is the relevancy of what it's called? State want to put on the record again the basis for the changes you made. Your Honor, to my way of thinking, it is beneficial to the defendant. It removes any reference to a Sally Port, which some may recognize as being part of the Waukesha County Jail. It removes reference to the jail itself. And then in the second sentence, the pattern instruction was worded and, and the court followed it. You will be taken to the Sally Port in the custody of the jury bailiffs. I just thought it was better to change that you will be taken to the garage by the jury bailiffs again removing the use of the word custody is it's it's factually true but it's really irrelevant um and Ed, just to be cautious your honor thank you with that sir do you have any i don't i don't i don't fundamentally it? understand that um I, I think everyone's well aware that i'm in custody so why does how does the wording change with what's already known? Um, everybody knows that I'm housed in the Waukesha County Jail. How does the wording change what's already known? It's reported, it's reported on every single day, as it has been since the beginning of trial and even before that. 
So I don't think anyone's not privy to the knowledge of where I'm housed and that I'm in custody. Um, how how does that how does changing the wording change what's what's already known? Thank you. From my perspective, um, of course, when I drafted this yesterday, um, factually, uh, what I put in there uh, would be accurate because that's where the jury view is going to take place. I think changing the verbiage so that it says a garage attached to the Waukesha County Courthouse um, takes away any possibility that other law enforcement is condoning what is happening um, or somehow related to the case. Um, it is true the location was selected uh, due to your custodial status and being able to secure the area for the court, for you, for the jurors, etc. Um, but it's also a controlled environment, I think, a good thing for purposes of the jury view. Um, and so I am going to adopt the draft that was submitted by the state. It, can, it still is factually accurate. Um, the whole, and from my perspective, again, the importance of this instruction is to tell them what is and what is not evidence. Um, and to instruct them and to not talk during this time. They can't discuss what they see during this time. This instruction uh, will be read while we are still in the courtroom prior to uh, the parties uh, in the court going to the Sally Port for that viewing. And I've already discussed how it will be contemporaneously recorded so that it's part of the record as well. So if I was there, where will I be at? My understanding, if uh, you choose to be there, is you will be escorted uh, like you are in court here t now. The bailiffs would be with you. You'd be in your suit. Um, no, where, where will in, I be at? It, you would, I don't know exactly. That's up to the sheriff's department as <clears throat> to where all the parties are going to stand. Um, obviously, you would, you know, we're not going to commingle you with the state or the state with jurors or you with the jurors or the court or anything like that. We're kind of, my understanding is um, we'll have sort of assigned places and that it's only myself who will walk around. And I may not even do that. I have to think about that. But it, the jurors are the ones who are going to walk around uh, the vehicle one time. So I don't get to walk around the vehicle? I can have you do that before, before the jurors come in. I certainly can have you do that, if you would like. I can give the parties that opportunity. May I add something else, Your Honor? Um, I, I agree with everything the court said. I also think Mr. Brooks should understand that it will be a fair process. He's not going to be led into the room in shackles in front of the jury. What it's my understanding from Captain Dussault the attorneys for the state, the prosecution team will be in the room. Mr. Brooks will be in the room. We will be in our assigned location. It will be fair. It will match. There will be basically no distinction between how Mr. Brooks appears to the jury versus how we appear to the jury. We will be in there first. If the court's willing to allow him to walk around the car one time to look at it, we have no objection to that. And then the jurors will come in. No one will speak. They will do one lap around the car. They will leave the room, and then the parties will leave the room. That's my understanding, Your Honor. And I will add to that, because it's been a while since I had some preliminary discussions with the Sheriff's Department on this, that if however many bailiffs, sh sheriff's deputies are with you, I want the same number with the state, right? And that's what we mean by it will look no different. So each party will be accompanied by deputies. Um, I have a question to that. Okay. Um, how come none of that knowledge of how it would be conducted was discussed with me? I didn't. I didn't know anything about how the bailiffs would actually do things. How certain things would, would go. To, I, I. This is my first time hearing this. Well, we so have preliminary. I don't understand it. We have preliminary discussions at the time of the request back in August when you still were represented by counsel. 
Um, and then I had some prelim additional preliminary discussions, if you will, internally with court staff, which included Captain Dussault and uh, someone from the jail uh, to talk about it and the logistics of it. And then, of course, we're having the discussion now, which is, again, why there's no jury here now. I wanted to wait until the appropriate time and then make a record of everything. But don't you At no time did I have conversations independently with the state. Don't they had filed a letter at one point because they themselves had, again, my understanding, and Attorney Opera can correct me if I'm wrong, had some discussions with, to see if it was feasi feasible, uh, they had some discussions with Captain Dussault. And Captain Dussault is uh, with the Waukesha County Sheriff's Department, of course, uh, the Waukesha County Sheriff's Department. Uh, and the sheriff is statutorily responsible for the security of the campus, security of the courtroom. Um, and so that would be the proper person for any party to have discussions about a piece of evidence uh, such as this. Um, but I did not have any discussions with the state myself. That only happened in the setting of a courtroom or when uh, a letter was received and I reviewed it. I haven't reviewed that letter or seen it. Don't you think that? It was specifically addressed at the jury status hearing, at which time he was represented by Attorney Perry and Attor Attorney Keys. It is on file, and it was addressed by this court. Many of these details, Your Honor. All right. Many of the same so, details that's being discussed right now at this moment. All right, Mr. Brooks, do you have uh, a request as it relates to any of that? <clears throat> Well, yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to understand the whole, how, how this is all working. And then it was a reference to um, how the shackles would look or how being shackled or not being shackled. I'm guessing that I can't just walk around freely with bailiffs. I'm sure there would be some type of shackles. Um, I will tell them you are not to be shackled visibly for the jury to see. And what do you mean by visibly, and Your Honor? So, obviously when you sit in court, you're shackled to a table, they can't see that. Um, I'm not gonna have you in belly chains or in uh, leg shackles. You're just going to be escorted. And it will be up to them how they determine um, well, he may be in leg shackles, Your Honor, if there's a table or some way that they can keep that out of the view of the jury, just like he is in court. He's shackled in court. He has been for three weeks. Actually, these are... The, the security has to be left at the discretion of the sheriff's department. Actually, yeah, these are leg, leg shot devices, not shackles. Sir, the security is up to the sheriff's department. I should be careful not to overstep my bounds on that and, you know... Whatever is done, it should not be viewable or visible to the jury. Um, and why, why is that, Your Honor? I don't understand that part. Why is the jury not privileged to see? That is to your benefit. Shock. I'm not going to explain that any further. I, um, I just I don't understand. I'm just seeking to understand. I don't know. All right, I need to move on. So I, if unless there's a specific request other than a statement that yep. you're making about your lack of understanding, I need to move on with the other topics. There is I a specific request. Why do I have to have ankle shocks on my ankles to appear at this jury view thing? I guess I'm not aware of what you're talking about. So did, were you advised by the Sheriff's Department that that would be the case? Well, she, the, the DA just said that I would have the ankle shocks on. No, shackles, she said. No, the, these are not shackles. They're shock, a shock device. Judge, I think perhaps we can move on. I think maybe because this is going to have to occur on a break. The bailiffs can take him down there if Captain Dussault is willing. Show him what it's going to be like. Show him how he's going to get there. And he can decide at that point if he wants to be there or not when the jury comes in the room. We're spending a lot of time talking about security and things that are frankly beyond your knowledge and my knowledge. I object to that. I'm simply trying to understand why do I need ankle shocks? I'm going to leave the security. Um, I'm not gonna make any specific orders. I'm gonna backtrack a little bit. I will leave the security of the jury view to the Waukesha County Sheriff's Department. That is their responsibility. 
um, and I trust that they will do what needs to be done to maintain the security no different than what they do here um, and in their discretion will determine how best that takes place. And if I need to address anything after that or at that point in time, then it should be brought to my attention, but we are going to move on this morning. So I should discuss that with the sheriff? Yes. So I know, Mr. Brooks, you filed uh, with the court two documents. I'm going to take them under advisement. No, it's I'm not one document. To... It's one. It was two papers, but it's, it's one document. Oh, all right. Thank you for that clarification. It's one filing, two papers, just front side, uh, entitled Alleged Defendant Jurisdictional Challenge and Mandatory Judicial Notice by Affidavit. It references the case caption, the case number. Um, I will simply take it under advisement, and, if, and I'll review it later, and if I believe it needs to further be addressed, I will do that, but it's my understanding uh, sir, that you um, are requesting the original back? Is that true? Yes. Uh, uh, so I normally, just so you know, when documents are filed with the court, we maintain the original until it's scanned in and it's audited. And then, um, because it, under the statute, once it's e-filed or into the electronic filing system in the electronic case, um, uh, off, I believe we just destroy the documents at that point. So I don't have an issue giving you back the original, but it needs to run the normal course. My clerk needs to scan it in. Um, I, again, I advised you of this previously, but in the courtroom, we don't have the time stamp. We just have the date stamp. I will state for the record that you provided this. It was right away at the beginning of the morning, so at 8.30 a.m. is when it was filed with the court, so that will be on the record. Um, and then at some point today, when we're on a break, my clerk can scan it in and then provide the original back to you, and then I'll have the electronic copy to review um, and address as I deem appropriate. Here you go, Madam Clerk. Uh, I want to say to that, too, in reference to that, I actually said on record numerous times that I wanted the original copies of all my filings. I've actually said that three times on the record. This would be the fourth time. Every As a courtesy, filing that I'm I've, going to give it back to you, sir, but I'm not required to by law. Well, I'm just I'm just saying on record that I've I've asked for that numerous times. Your statements noted for the record. All right. So would I be I've able covered, to get all the original copies of all my I, filings? I'm not going to address that any further, sir, because I am not the official keeper of the record. As to what was filed this morning, as a courtesy, we will provide you back with the original once it's scanned and it's in my electronic file. I was told that you make the decision if I can get the original copy. And I just made a determination you could have the original back of this. Can one. I have the originals for all my filing? I'm not going to address that right now, sir. I don't have time, frankly, to look through everything that you filed to determine whether we've given you originals or not. In the future, I have. I have the copy. I don't have the originals. All right, I'm going to move on. I have sir. them here. This is taking up valuable time with the jury. We need to keep going. Um, is that a judicial determination, Your Honor, that I can't get an answer to? I, I, I don't believe there's any other preliminary issues we need to address unless uh, the parties have anything from the state. Just very briefly, Your Honor, uh, to advise the court, I have four witnesses here that I believe are very brief records custodian type witnesses on some video evidence. I'm hoping my direct should take five to ten minutes for each of them. And then I have two police officers who will be testifying. There will be some physical evidence involved when those officers testify. And Detective Casey went to retrieve it and he will bring it to the courtroom. When that moment comes, do you want me to have Detective Reglin take the exhibits to the witness stand or what is the court's direction on that? Um, I would like you to provide it to the uh, Sheriff's Department bailiff who's in the courtroom, my bailiff, okay. who will then take it to the witness stand. Okay, Deputy Berto and... <clears throat> yes, okay, I understand. Thank you. All right, thank you for uh, the roadmap for today, if you will. Anything preliminary other than the filing, sir, and, any, and other than the topics we've discussed this morning? Yeah, I'm still wondering uh, when I'll get the copies back for the... Uh, ICFs that I filed. I can't answer that. I don't have those, sir. You'll have to reach out to a uh, clerk of court, Monica Paz. Well, what happened to him? 
I don't know. I don't, they're not part of the record. So you'll they have to take be. that up with her by an inmate communication form and ask her for those. But I'm not going to address that any further on the record. All they right, should let's be. the jury out. Um, it's kind of funny that they disappeared. Um, no, yeah, I see them disappeared okay, before. Not in evidence, sir, so, they um, haven't disappeared before. I've always got copies. <clears throat> What's the difference now? All rise for the jury. So I have to readdress, readdress her the same thing in order to get copies that I've always been getting since the beginning of you telling me to file ICF. Sir, as a courtesy, if you want to make a list of whatever documents you believe you have not been provided copies with, I will, as a courtesy, instruct my clerk, Teresa. They're not going to be uh, dates or time stamps other than what's in the file. They'll be from the electronic file, but you need to provide her with a list, and then I will do that as a courtesy to you. But I'm not required to do that. But as a courtesy, I will do that. And as far as any ICFs, if they weren't directed to me, then you will have to follow up with uh, Clerk of Court Monica Paz. I don't have them. They're not part of the file. Then why were you getting them before? You'll have to ask her that. I have to ask her why you were getting them before? My understanding is they were forwarded to me, sir, but we'll... So what happened to this one being forwarded to you? Sir, I can't answer that. I can't answer what I don't know. So it, it the jury's like coming in. To we're going to keep... Con That's we're going to continue like. with the trial. So thank Just you. like you've avoided subject matter jurisdiction. You haven't proven that on the record. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. And thank you for your patience this morning as the court addressed some legal issues with the parties. All right. Uh, if the state would please call their next witness. Thank you, Judge. The state calls Steve Schloman. Stephen Schloman, S T E V E N S C H L O M A N N. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Schloman. Good morning. Sir, what is your uh, job title? I'm the IT director at Waukesha School District. And are you aware as to whether or not the school district maintains security cameras at the, uh, the buildings on the school district uh, property? Yes, we do. Um, overruled. It's foundational. The witness may answer. I'm sorry. Yes, we do. Okay. And specifically, is there a school district property located at the uh, address of 222 Maple Street or Avenue in the city of Waukesha? Yes. What? Overruled. It's foundational. The state or the witness may answer. I believe you did, and your answer will stand. If there is an objection, sir, wait until I okay. rule on it before you answer it. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. What building is that location, sir? Uh, that is our district office. And is there more than one security camera on that building? Um, overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. <laughs> How many are there, sir? Overruled, the witness may answer. I'm not exactly sure, but I believe there is about eight. Okay. 
Directing your attention to uh, the days following November 21 of 2021, were you contacted by the Waukesha Police Department for any reason? Yes, I was. For what reason? Uh, they asked me to look at my external security camera footage to see if I saw anything unusual on it. And that would be specific to the building at 222 Maple Avenue? That's correct. Overruled, the answer may stand. I'm going to um, show you an item that's been marked as, uh, well, let me ask you one other uh, foundational question. Do your security cameras record the activity? Yes, they are recorded on a digital video recording system. And can be viewed later? That's correct. Okay. So um, when the police came to you in the days following November 21 of 21, did they ask you to check a certain day and time? on the video recording for the building at 222 Maple? Jason, to Overall, the witness may answer. <coughs> yes, they asked me to look at um, Sunday. Uh, this was Monday They when they contacted me and they asked me to look at Sunday um, at approximately 4.30 p.m. in that range. Okay, and did you do that, sir? Yes, I did. And did you um, view any video that you thought may be helpful to the police? Uh, yes. Did you turn those recordings over to the police? Yes, I did. Had you changed or altered the content of the recording in any way? Objection. We overruled the witness may answer. Uh, no, I have not edited it or changed it in any way. Okay. Now I'm going to show you uh, first an item that's been marked as Exhibit 157. And for the record, Your Honor, I'm just laying the foundation with these videos with this witness. I do not intend to display them at this time. Will there be more than one? Uh, well, this witness has two. And that will be exhibit 157 and? 158. All right, thank you, go ahead. So <coughs> is there an image on the screen in front of you, sir? Yes. Okay, do you recognize what we're seeing there, sir? Yes. Could you please tell us what is shown on the uh, front screen of exhibit 157? Objection leading. Overruled. The witness uh, This is the side of our uh, Lindholm administration building at 222 Maple. Okay. Do you need to see the uh, like five or ten seconds played, or are you confident that's what we're looking at here? I'm confident that's what we're looking at. All right. Do you believe uh, the video contained in Exhibit 157 will be a true and accurate depiction of the events? Uh, at, from this location on November 21 of 21. Objection. Speculative. Do you want him to see the video first? Why don't you show him the video first? Well, the video is 20 minutes long, Your Honor. Oh, all right. <laughs> or I'm sorry, 11 minutes long. Um, but I think he's made the adequate foundation, Your Honor, that he's confident where this cam camera is and what it shows. All right, with that. Um, the objections overruled, and uh, I'll receive Exhibit 157. Thank you. Now I'm going to display for the witness only Exhibit 158. <coughs> Do you recognize what is shown in Exhibit 158? Yes. Please describe it. Just uh, leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. This is our rear parking lot at the Lindholm Administration Building. At that same address? 222 Maple, yes, that's okay. correct. Is this a, a second camera? Objection leading. Correct. Overruled, the witness may answer. Correct, this is a second camera. And is uh, does this appear to be one of the uh, video clips that you also provided to the Waukesha Police upon their request? Yes. And for the record, again, Your Honor, this uh, entire video is 11 minutes in duration. Uh, based on the testimony of the witness, I do not intend to play any of it at this time, but I would move to admit 158. Objection. It's not intended to play. What's the relevancy? Um, the objection is noted. It's overruled, and Exhibit 158 is received. Thank you. I don't have any other questions, sir. All right, thank you. Go ahead, sir. Do you have any questions for this witness? Uh, brief. Uh, before today, sir, well, first of all, good morning. Good morning. Um, 
before today, had you seen uh, these exhibits or videos, rather, one, uh, 157 and 158? I've seen this video when I collected it off our system. <laughs> and uh, do you recall seeing the, f the, the first one? Yes, I do. Do you recall uh, when you saw those videos? I saw those uh, Monday morning um, when my detectives came and asked me to review video footage. And do you recall uh, the name of the detective that uh, you reviewed the footage with? I do not recall the name of the detective, no. And after that, uh, initially, well, after initially uh, viewing these videos, uh, did you follow up with law enforcement at after that? Yes, I did. And it would be fair to assume that that was strictly about the. Uh, the videos. Correct. And had you obtained any knowledge uh, outside of what was shown in the videos? I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, had you obtained any knowledge to why you uh, were asked to provide those videos at that time? No, I was just asked to look at uh, my videos and see if I saw anything unusual, any unusual activity in the parking lot. And uh, do you recall being informed that it was a possibility a possibility that you would be testifying in this matter? No, I did not know that. Were you subpoenaed at any time? Yes, I was. And <laughs> do you recall about how long ago you received that subpoena? Um, several weeks ago. So pretty recent, would be fair to say. Um, yes, I would. Well, several weeks ago. I'm not sure if that's your definition of recent or not, but... Do you recall who served you the subpoena? Objection relevant. Grounds. Overruled, the witness may answer. Uh, the district attorney's office from Waukesha. Do you recall if it was a specific district attorney? I do not recall. Do you recall if you were contacted by the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Um, sustain this to the form of the question. Do you recall having a, a conversation with the plaintiff? Objection. Grounds. Misleading, legally inaccurate statement. Here. Grounds. Sustain this to the form of the question. Do you recall having a phone conversation with the plaintiff in these? Same matter? objection. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. <coughs> Do you yourself recall Do you yourself recall reaching out to the plaintiff in this matter? I'm not sure who the plaintiff is. Can you define that for me? The plaintiff would be who's who's bringing the claim. 
Your Honor, I object. Well, I, I realize there's no question at this point, but if he's going to ask the witness to answer his prior question, now that he's clarified this is irrelevant questioning. We'll see what his question is first. I actually. Please ask your question again so that I'm clear. Have you yourself ever reached out to the plaintiff in this matter? And my objection is it's vague and it's legally inaccurate. Sustained us to the form of the question. Do you even know if there is a plaintiff in this matter? Objection, our Grounds. representative. Sustained as to the form of the question. file any complaint in this matter? Objection irrelevant. Uh, overall, the witness may ask. I mean, may answer, sorry. I have not, no. Do you know of anyone who filed a claim in this matter? Objection Grounds. irrelevant. Overall, the witness may answer. I do not. Do you recall when you submitted uh, the uh, the videos to law enforcement? I submitted them on um, Monday afternoon. And do you recall what method you uh, submitted it in? The detectives came to my office and uh, they viewed the video on my system directly and then they asked me to put it on a flash drive so I downloaded it on a flash drive, um, exported it to a flash drive and then they took it. No further questions? Um, any redirect? No, Your Honor, I'd ask Mr. Schloman be excused. All right, thank you, sir. You may step down. And he is excused. They will call Robert Stone. Good morning, Mr. Stone. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is up by me to my right, up one riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. First thing I will have you do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. First name is Robert, R-O-B-E-R-T, last name Stone, S-T-O-N-E, two capital I's on this, and because I'm the second. Very good, thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Good morning, Mr. Stone. Good morning. Sir, on the date of November 21, 2021, where did you live? I reside at 424 Dunbar Avenue in Waukesha. Do you have any uh, security cameras at your home, sir? I do. 
and do the security cameras have a way to record or save events that are uh, captured on the camera? They do. Overrule foundational, the witness may answer. And just so you know, sir, if there is an objection, wait to answer the question until I rule on the objection. Thank you. Go ahead. To your knowledge, sir, was your security camera system operational on November 21 of 2021? Objection. Yes. Speculative. Overruled. The witness may answer, and he did his answer. <coughs> was there a time where you turned over video from that security system to Waukesha Police uh, sometime around November 21 of 2021? Objection. Leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes. What kind of security camera do you have, sir? Objection, leading. Overruled. You may answer, sir. It's uh, just a generic NVR system. Okay. And uh, police came to your house? Is that right? They did. Okay. Um, what did you give them? Uh, they came to my house, and my mother-in-law had answered, and they had asked about the security cameras, and she told them that it was her son-in-law's. And then I retrieved the footage and turned it into the police department. Before you turned it into the officers, did you alter the content of the video in any way, sir? Objection, speculative. Um, overruled, please wait, sir. Sure. Overruled, the witness may answer. Absolutely not. I'm going to have uh, exhibit 155 displayed on the screen in front of you, sir. And uh, this clip is 40 seconds long, so I'm going to uh, play it for the witness only in full at regular speed. Go ahead. That's not regular speed, Your Honor. Please wait for Cross. We'll have the state question the witness about that, though. All right, if you could um, start it at the zero, zero. Again, just put up that. Um, sir, did you see that 40 second uh, clip that was just displayed? I did. Do you believe that's a true and accurate uh, capture of the events at your residence on November 21 of 21? Objection, speculative. Overruled, you may answer. It is. I noticed in the upper right hand corner <coughs> of the video there appears to be a date and time stamp. Do you see that? Yes. Objection, relevancy. Do you believe. Well, hold on, overruled. The witness may answer. Yes. Do you believe that date and time stamp was accurate? It, it is, but it's off by the daylight savings time. Okay. So, so um, it reads, what does it read? It's currently reading 4.59. For the time of day? Correct. AM or PM? Uh, PM. Okay. What do you recall the uh, real day and time to be? Objection Pretty leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Would have been an hour earlier. Okay. And do you um, recognize the scene that's shown here, sir? Yes. What are we seeing here? Uh, my garage and my vehicles and my backyard. All right. Uh, move to admit 155, Your Honor. Objection, rather busy. Overruled, the objection is noted. Uh, but Exhibit 155 is received. And I'm no, sorry, did you ask to publish? No. Okay. Thank no you. further questions at this time, Your Honor. All right. Very well, sir. If you do you have any questions for this witness? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, good morning, Mr. Stone. Uh, before today, had you had had you viewed that uh, footage before today? Yes. And do you recall seeing anything unusual? <coughs> Not sure I understand the question. Do you recall seeing anything unusual? Do you mean in the footage or? In the footage. Go ahead and I answer with that understanding. 
I guess not. No. So if you don't recall seeing anything unusual in the footage, what would be the purpose to turn it into law enforcement? Objection. Grounds. It's argumentative and a misstatement. Grounds. Oh, it, the way it's phrased, I believe it calls for speculation on the part of the witness as well as the other reasons indicated by the state. So I'll sustain it as to the form of the question. Why did you turn the, the video footage into law enforcement? I was asked to go through my camera footage. Even though you hadn't saw anything unusual? Sure, correct. And you stated that uh, the, the time was off because of daylight savings time? Correct. And so it would have been an hour earlier than what was being shown? I believe so, yes, correct. Can you state where that uh, particular cam camera is positioned on your residence? It's on the back of my, my home facing my garage. Call what law enforcement agency you turned that that footage in to? Was the Waukesha Police Department? Do you recall uh, what officer you spoke with when you turned in the video footage? I do not. stated that you saw the footage before today. Um, any idea exactly what we were looking at? Uh, recorded footage of my backyard. Pretty standard to any, any other footage from any other day? I guess I don't understand that question. Is it pretty much the same thing you would see any day if you v viewed that footage? It's recorded footage in my backyard. Is it pretty much the same footage you would have saw if you viewed it every day? Sure. And do you recall if you were subpoenaed to testify in this matter? Yes. Yeah, I received a letter. Do you recall by whom? Waukesha County was on the envelope. I don't remember the names on it. Do you recall how long ago that was? I do not. Did you, did you yourself at any time file a claim in this matter? No. Do you know of anyone, of anyone who has filed a claim in this matter? No. Have you ever talked to the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Bank. Sustained as to the form of the question. <coughs> Have you yourself ever reached out to the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Bank. Sustained as to the form of the question. 
Have you ever had any personal interaction with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Vague, argumentative, irrelevant. Sustained. Sustained for those reasons stated by. Sustained as to the form of the question as well. Are you sure if there is a plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevant. Sustained for those reasons. Were you at any time informed that there's a plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Sustained. For the reason stated by the. Sustained. For the reason stated yes. by the state. Also as to the form of the question. Have you at any time seen anywhere or read anywhere that there's a plaintiff in this matter? Objection, Grounds. Your Honor. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Also as to the form of the question. No further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. I'd ask Mr. Stone be excused. Thank you, sir. You may step down. And yes, he's excused. Thank you. Thank you. You may call your next witness. State calls Andrew Amerson. What was the name again? Andrew Amerson. All right, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Amerson, if you would please make your way to my witness stand, which is to my right. Up one side, sir, when you get there, please remain standing, raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. The first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Andrew Amerson, capital A-N-D-R-E-W, capital A-M-E-R-S-O-N. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Amerson. Good morning. Sir, on November 21 of 2021, where did you live? 435 Dunbar. Is that here in the city of Waukesha? Yes. And do you, is that your home? Yes. Overruled, it's foundational, the witness may answer. If there is an objection, sir, I will need to rule on it first before you answer, so just wait until I do that. Thank you. Okay. Do you have any uh, security cameras at your home, sir? Yes, I do. And did you back then in November of 21? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer, it's foundational. Yes. To your knowledge, were they in uh, working order on November 21 of 21? Objection, speculation. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. Does your security camera have a uh, recording capability? Objection, leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. And can the recordings be viewed at a later time? <laughs> yes. At some point, uh, close to November 21 of 2021, maybe a, a day or two later, were you contacted by the Waukesha Police Department? Objection leading. Overruled. I was contacted on Monday and on Wednesday. Okay. Why were the officers at your house, sir? They were, my cameras are evident from the street, so they were curious if they were in working order and okay. if they could look at them. Did you agree to that? Absolutely. And uh, did they specifically obtain uh, recordings 
related to the date of November 21 of 21? Objection leading. Overruled the witness may answer, it's foundational. Yes. Did you ultimately provide a copy of those recordings to the officers? Yes, on Wednesday. How did you do that, sir? I gave them uh, the operating system after acquainting them with the uh, monitor and how it all worked. Okay. And uh, they were focused on a certain area uh, to the west. Okay. And I showed them how to get a good view on that and uh, welcome them to have it if they needed it. Did they take it? Yes. Before you turned it over to them, sir, did you change the content of the recording in any way? Objection no. leading. Sorry. Um, it's speculative. Overruled as to both objections, the witness may answer. Nothing was changed. Okay. I'm going to ask uh, you to look at the screen next to you. I'm going to put up Exhibit 156. This is a nine-second clip. Can you see that, sir? I can. All right, I'm going to play that clip for you at regular speed in its entirety. I'm sorry, how many seconds is it? Nine seconds, Your Honor. Can we make sure it's playing at regular speed? Did you see that clip, sir? Yes, I did. Is that uh, a portion of the recording that you turned over to the Waukesha Police Department? Yeah, that's the camera that faces west. Okay. Do you believe that uh, exhibit, what we just showed you, that video, is a true and accurate representation of the events that evening uh, near your home? Yes. And if you look uh, on the screen, sir, do you see a date and time stamp for the video? Yes. Objection leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. What was the date and time stamp that the uh, video was recorded, please? November 21, 2021, at 4.46.41 p.m. Thank you, sir. I move for admission of 156, Your Honor. Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. The Exhibit 156 is received. No further questions. Thank you. You may be uh, questioned by... Mr. Brooks, now go ahead, sir. Do you have any questions? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, good morning, Mr. Emerson. Uh, would it be fair to say that you you saw the video footage before today? I saw it on the day of and the days following. <coughs> and what if at anything do you see on the video? I see a man crossing the street coming down from the properties across the street. And you, you said a man. Um, would you say it's fair to say that from the video this is a, a pretty good distance from where your camera was positioned? That video image is a good distance. It's about 50 yards. And you can tell from the video that you just watched today, you can tell the gender of the individual that you saw crossing the street, as you say? Well, <laughs> when I saw it originally, I had zoom. Okay, the feature, the feature of the camera zooms. So your image was real clear. So the image was real clear when you had zoom. Any reason why this particular image doesn't have that feature? They objection. can do whatever they want. Ground. Objection. Hold on, there's an objection. Sorry. Let me rule on it. Beyond the scope of the witness's knowledge, Your Honor. Um, I'll overrule if you know the answer. I don't know what decisions they made in choosing the display. Um, and was that all you saw in the video, or did you see anything else unusual, something that may have caught in your eye? Or that's the only thing 
that I was focused on. Do you recall with uh, what agency you was contacted by uh, about the video footage? The detectives that came to my home on Monday identified themselves and then told me that other detectives might show up on Wednesday and other detectives did show up on Wednesday. I didn't write down their names. Do you recall what agency they were from? Police Department. Uh, do you recall if there if there were Waukesha Police Department or some other jurisdiction? I'm pretty sure they were Waukesha, but I, you know, didn't ask. Uh, did those detectives uh, ever uh, follow up with you after those initial dates <coughs> from that Monday? I think you said in the Wednesday. Never saw her again after Wednesday. Did you yourself follow up with law enforcement after those two visits? No. And do you recall when you were subpoenaed to testify in this matter? Late July, early August. Do you recall by whom? Waukesha County District Attorney's Office. <clears throat> do you recall whose name was on that subpoena? I would have to take a look at it to recall it. And once you received the subpoena, did you uh, call the Waukesha District Attorney's Office to gather any information about the subpoena? On a few days, getting close to October 3rd, I made a phone call to ask if I was going to be somebody that they needed on October 3rd because I hadn't heard anything from them. Do you recall who you spoke with at that time? I believe the person that gave me the information that was helpful to me was Carrie Peterson. It would be fair to say at that time you were notified that you possibly were needed to testify. It was an unknown still at that point. Later I received a text saying that I was on call as a witness. Did you receive that text the same day that you uh, called the district attorney's office or sometime after? It might have been the same day. It might have been the next day. Did you yourself at any time file any claims in relation to this matter? No. Do you know of anyone who filed any claims in relation to this matter? That's a privacy issue. You may answer the question. I know that my grandchildren received counseling, and I think that a uh, Waukesha Community Fund might have helped cover some of that. Uh, do you recall the name of the fund? No.
And to your knowledge, the uh, the fund that you speak of was strictly geared towards uh, counseling. I'm not privy to what it was geared toward. So would it be fair to say that there was a, a financial interest attached to this incident? Absolutely not. And there's a mental health interest. And how's, how's everybody doing now? Are they okay? Objection irrelevant. Grounds? Um, sustained. For relevance? Yes. Have at any time you yourself had any personal interactions with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Sustained to the form of the question. Do you know if there is a plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Relevant. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor? Not relevant. Do you recall if the plaintiff in this matter reached out to you in any way? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Asked and answered. Grounds. Sustained for those reasons. Also as to the form of the question. Just for the record, it wasn't asked and answered. Just for the record. Next question, please. Do you yourself know if there even is a plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Argumentative. Grounds. Same. This is the form of the question. No further questions. Thank you, sir. Any redirect? No, I'd ask that Mr. Amerson be excused, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. You may step down. And you are excused. Go ahead. Stay cold. Leonard Miller. Good morning, Mr. Miller. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is to my right. It is up one riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. Thank you. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Leonard Miller, L-E-O-N-A-R-D, Miller, M-I-L-L-E-R. Thank you. Go ahead. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Mr. Miller, on November 21 of 2021, where did you reside? Uh, Overruled, the witness may answer. 
126 Central Avenue. And that's here in the city of Waukesha? Uh, Waukesha, yes. Okay. Do you have any uh, home security systems in place at your residence? Sir? Objection, speculative. Overruled the witness hand, sir. Um, yes, I have uh, two doorbell cameras and a uh, 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 floodlight cam. Uh, are you able to record the events that are captured on the security camera? Yes. And can those uh, recordings be shared with others? Yes. Uh, at some point uh, shortly after November 21 of 2021, were you contacted by the Waukesha Police Department? Um, it was actually that evening. Okay. Um, Tell us about it, please. Well, actually, uh, after everything transpired, um, I just got done setting up my Christmas lights and I was in the house and uh, my wife came down from taking a shower and I said, let's go look at the lights. We stepped outside, well, we started to step out the front door and um, there was actually a SWAT team in our front yard. Okay. So I said, we're not going to look at the lights now. <laughs> so then uh, um, uh, after a little bit, uh, I started looking through my cameras. And uh, I, I, I noticed uh, somebody running up my driveway on, on the one camera. Did and you so recognize I, the person? I did not. Okay. Oh, Sorry. Hold on, there's been an objection. It's overruled. His answer may stand. If there are further objections, please wait until I rule on them before sure. you answer. That's okay. Thank you. Okay, so you saw somebody on the recording that you did not recognize? Correct. What? Overruled. Um, it's foundational. I'll allow it, but please move on. What did Go you, ahead. What did you do when you saw that, sir? I uh, uh, called the Waukesha Police Department, um, and uh, a short while later, a couple officers came over and uh, walked through my property and through the garage uh, and made sure nobody was there. Then about an hour or so later, I, I believe it was a detective called me and asked if I could um, send them the copy of the video. Did you do that? I did. Prior to doing that, did you alter the content of the video in any fashion, sir? No. My, um, overruled, the witness may answer. Go ahead. I did not. I have no way of, I wouldn't know how to. Okay. How did you send it to the police officers? via email okay i'm going to put up uh, on your screen next to you exhibit 159 please this is a 20 second clip and i'm going to add, uh, play it for you at regular speed and then i'll ask you a question okay sure say 159 exhibit 159 is what i wrote down and yes go ahead Mr. Miller, is that the recording you provided to the Waukesha Police Department? Yes. Do you believe this is a true and accurate depiction of the events at your home on November 21 of 2021? Objection, relevancy. Overrule. You may answer. Yes. In the upper right-hand corner of the recording, I notice there's a date and time stamp. Do you see that? Yes. Objection, leading. Do you believe that was uh, accurate? Overrule. I'm sorry. There's, um, the witness's answer may stand. Go ahead, next question. Do you believe the date and time stamp on the recording are accurate, sir? Yes. And what, if you could read, please, the date and time stamp on Exhibit 159. November 21st, 2021, 04-48-16 um, p.m. Uh, move to admit Exhibit 159, Your Honor. Objection, relevancy. Um, overruled. Exhibit 159 is received. I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Thank you. Any cross, sir? Uh, yes, briefly. Go ahead when you're ready. Okay. 
Uh, good morning, Mr. Miller. Good morning. Um, before today, uh, it would be fair to assume that you saw that footage before today. Yes. And you stated a little bit earlier that when uh, stepping out to view the Christmas lights, you, you noticed a SWAT team in your yard? Correct. Uh, what, what do you mean by SWAT team? Uh, fully armed, uh, rifles in hand, uh, helmets on, officers uh, in my front yard. Well, and on the street of my front yard, I should clarify that, in the street of my front yard. Uh, did you notice uh, any vehicle that they may have been in at that time? Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat that question, please? Uh, did you notice, uh, at the time that you observed the SWAT team in your uh, yard, did you notice any vehicle that they may have been in at that time? Um, I did observe a squad car down the street. Whether it was theirs or not, I, I cannot say for sure. And do you recall uh, what police agency you turned the uh, video footage over to? Uh, yeah, it was Waukesha uh, Police Department. Do you remember uh, the name of the officer that you turned the video footage over to? I am sorry, I do not. Uh, do you recall filing a, a report at that time? I... No, no report was made. So it would be fair to say the extent of uh, your interaction with law enforcement was strictly about the video footage? Correct. Do you recall if uh, law enforcement followed up with you about the footage? Um, I don't believe so. Did you yourself follow up with law enforcement uh, about the video footage? I did not. And do you recall when you were subpoenaed to testify in this matter? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part of your question. I'm sorry. Um, I have a bit of a cold, so. Sure. Um, do you recall when you were subpoenaed to testify in this matter? I can't remember the exact date, but um, it was a few weeks ago. And when you received the subpoena, did you follow up with the district attorney's office? I'm assuming, assuming that that's who served the subpoena? I did. Do you recall who, whom you spoke with? I do not recall the name, I'm sorry. Did you yourself file any claims in relation to this matter? I have not. Do you know of anyone who filed a claim in relation to this matter? Personally, no. Uh, to the best of your recollection, do you recall being uh, contacted by uh, the plaintiff in this matter? And other than regards to the summons, no. And you made reference to the summons. Uh, or subpoena. 
rather. What, was the plaintiff's name on the subpoena? I believe so. Do you recall what their name was? The state of Wisconsin. Have you ever had any interactions with the state of Wisconsin? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Vague. Argumentative. Grounds. Sustained. For those reasons, Your Honor? Or? Sustained. Yes. Being, being that you identified the state of Wisconsin as the plaintiff, have they ever reached out to you in any way? Objection. Grounds. Vague. Have you ever had any personal inf personal interaction with the state of Wisconsin? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant argument. Grounds. Grounds. Sustained. For those reasons stated by? Yes. Would you yourself classify uh, the plaintiff that you identified, state of Wisconsin, would you, would you classify them as a living human being? Objection. Grounds. Vague, irrelevant, argumentative. Sustained for those reasons. Would it be fair to say that a state cannot be a human being? I, it could be argued philosophically, I guess, yes. And but I don't know. No. No? Personally, no. But philosophically, I suppose you could argue that the state is a person. The state? One state? I suppose it could be argued. And with determination, how did you come to that determination? Objection. He said he did. No, Your Honor, that's a misstatement of his testimony. Sustained as to the form of the question. It's also not relevant. Do you see the state of Wisconsin present in the courtroom today? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Not relevant. What was the last part, Your Honor? Not relevant. Have you ever seen the state of Wisconsin at any time? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained for those reasons. What reasons are here? For those reasons, it was also asked previously, and I sustained the objection. That question wasn't asked previously, for the record. So to the best of your knowledge, is the state of Wisconsin an injured party in this matter? Your Honor, I object. Grounds. I ask you to direct the defendant to move on. Grounds. Uh, the objection I think the is judge sustained. Has to do that, pursuant to the, the objection is sustained. Next question, please. Uh, I'm sorry, I was I didn't hear the reason for the sustain. It's not relevant. Your Honor, I object to it not being relevant. He clearly stated Mr. Brooks, the plaintiff. Please move on. I've made my ruling. Thank you. Uh, I don't know how that's not relevant. It seems to me that there's no plaintiff. 
I remind the jury to disregard comments made by the parties. They are not evidence. There's no plaintiff. No further questions. Thank you, sir. Any redirect? No, I'd ask that Mr. Miller be excused, please. Sir, thank you. You may step down and you are excused. Thank you. Take a short mid-morning break for about 15 minutes. I'll rise for the jury, please. It's 10.32. Be back in 15 minutes. We are in recess. Thank you.
morning. Break appearances are as they were before. State have another witness to call this morning? Yes. All right, then let's have the jury brought out. Your objection to that is noted. I'm declining to revisit that issue, sir. Is that a judicial determination? It is. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Statement called special witness, please. <coughs> Thank you. State calls specialist Kyle Becker. Good morning, sir. If you would please make your way to the witness stand. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Kyle Becker, K Y L E B E C K E R. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Sir, how are you employed? City of Washoe Police Department. What's your job type? Uh, Warden Specialist. And uh, directing your attention to the date of November 23, 2021. Were you on duty that day? Yes, I was. What duties were you tasked with on that day? Me and uh, several other uh, officers, detectives, were tasked with being part of the search team canvassing area for items. Okay, and this is related to the investigation into the Christmas parade? Objection at lead us. Okay. Um, the objection's noted. Um, it's overruled. These are foundational type questions, so I'll allow it. Um, for the witness, though, please make sure you wait until I rule on objections before you answer. Thank you. Next question. So you said the purpose of the team was to look for items, did you say? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, items that um, we believe Mr. Brooks, or L. Brooks, was wearing the night of the incident. We discarded it. Okay. And did you come up with a plan or a method to proceed? Yes, we did. So we, uh, we knew that he fled from the vehicle at 338 Maple Avenue in the city of Washa. So we directed our team around that area and we were going to start on the 300 block of Maple and we were going to work westbound in the backyards um, until we got to like Northwest Avenue trying to look for items that might have been discarded by Darrell Brooks. And what day was this that you set out to do this? November 23rd, 2021. Was there an objection or not? Yes. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. It was uh, November 23rd, 2021. What time of day were you uh, performing this search? It's approximately about 10, 15 in the morning. Did you personally recover any items of interest in this case, sir? Yes, I did. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, the, the first item that we located was a blue sandal, or they also call it a slide, that was located at 322 Maple Avenue in the backyard. 
322 butts up to 434 Dunbar. And in the backyards, there is a chain link, chain link <coughs> fence that separates the two yards. The first sandal that we located was our right footed sandal, and it was on the maple side, 322 maple side of the fence, um, close, close by the chain link fence. All right, I'm going to uh, put up two items, uh, photographs. The first one would be exhibit 94. Is that on your screen, sir? Yes, it is. Do you identify, or excuse me, do you recognize what is depicted in Exhibit 94? Objection, Lee. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, I do. Tell the jury what you see in 94. It is the uh, blue sandal that was outside the fenced chain link fence area, like I described. It is a navy blue in color, and it also had a Milwaukee Brewers uh, logo album on the front of the sandal which appeared to be like torn or worn. Do you believe the Exhibit 94 is a true and accurate depiction of the area where the sandal was found? Yes, I do. And the exact location where the sandal was found? Objection, leading. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, I do. Uh, permission to publish 94, Your Honor? Well, wait, before we do that, I'm going to have you uh, identify 95 as well, and then we'll put them up. Go ahead with the next exhibit. Is 95 now on your screen, sir? Yes, it is. What is shown in 95? The navy blue sandal with, that I just described. So, uh, similar, or how is 95 different from 94? Objection leading. Um, overall, you may answer. They were the same exact sandal, just different pictures. That's what I mean. What's the difference between the photographs? Objection leading. Overall, the witness may answer. Uh, just the angle of where the picture was taken. Okay. Uh, do you believe that 95 is the accurate representation of where and how the sandal was found? Yes, I do. Uh, move to admit 94 and 95 and permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection. Relevancy. The objection is noted. Or rule exhibits 94 and 95 are received permission to publish granted. And then for my ladies and gentlemen in the jury, let me know when it shows up on the screens in the jury box, as there is a delay at times. All right, we're good. Go ahead. Sir, if you could just orient us in the uh, picture there. You had described in your testimony a chain link fence, correct? Correct. Does that separate two properties? Objection, leading. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, it does separate two properties. And what Le are those properties, please? Objection, relevancy. Overruled, the witness may answer. The, uh, where the sandal is located right now, that is um, on the address of 322 Maple Avenue, and the opposite side of the fence, which would be to the south of that, would be 434 Dunbar. Okay. So even though the properties about the street addresses are on different streets. Yes, that is correct. And 322 Maple, can you approximate for us the distance that is to the location where the red SUV was found? Objection, speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. Actually, let me do this. I'm going to sustain it as to found. I think another question needs to be asked of this witness regarding the red SUV. Sir, um, I think you testified earlier that you um, set out to search the area around 338 Maple, correct? Yes, that is correct. And what was the significance of that address, please? That was where the vehicle was located that Darrell Brooks was driving the night of their Christmas parade. Okay. And could you please approximate for us the distance between the residence where the vehicle was found and the residence where this sandal was found? Objection, relevancy. Overruled, the witness may answer. If this is an approximate guess, I would I guess around 200 yards. Okay. Um, Device in front of you is a touch screen. Can you please circle the sandal in the photograph? All 
All right, thank you. And then if we could please display 95. Uh, before you do that. I'm sorry. Any capture of this being requested before? Uh, no, because I think 95 will do that for us, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Then go ahead, next exhibit. All right, now 95 is up, sir. <coughs> Same thing, circle? Uh, sure. Objection, leading. Um, yes, over, please circle. Overruled the witness may answer by circling. All right. I'd now I'd like to show you a piece of physical evidence that's been marked as State's Exhibit 86. If I could get the assistance of the deputy, please. Could you please present that to the witness for me? Is that, you said 86? I was going to ask the same thing because I missed that too. Can I have the number again? Yes, 86, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Exhibit 86. Not yet. Sir, have you seen uh, Exhibit 86 before? <coughs> yes. What is 86? 86 is the sandal that I located outside of 322 Maple Avenue. One we are just seeing in the photographs 94 and 95? Yes. Okay. Uh, move to admit 86, Your Honor. Objection, relevancy. Ex uh, overruled, Exhibit 86 has received. Officer Becker, did you find any other items of significance to this investigation? Objection, Lee. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, I did. What else did you find? I, I found another blue sandal. <laughs> Uh, which was a left-footed uh, blue slide sandal with the same Milwaukee Brewers logo elbow on it that was worn out. And then I also located a uh, gray hooded sweatshirt that had a multicolored design or logo on the front of the sweatshirt. That sweatshirt was um, the same sweatshirt <coughs> that we believed Mr. Brooks was wearing during the incident with the Washoe Parade. Where did you find these items? These items were located so that chain, link, that chain link fence that was up before earlier. It was on the opposite side south of that chain link fence, which would have been the address of 434 Dunbar Avenue. Um, I was directed towards that area because due to the fact that I, I thought Mr. Brooks tried jumping the fence and that's how he lost the first sandal. So I was directed towards that area due to the fact um, in, in that vicinity there. So I was searching in the backyard of that area and I located a children's playhouse. Uh, this children's playhouse was uh, made of wood and it had about four or five steps up until you got to the platform of uh, the ch uh, children's playhouse. There also was a slide connected to it uh, that would lead down to the grass. I located in that platform area, I located the gray hooded sweatshirt that had a multicolor design. It's the same sweatshirt that we believed Mr. Brooks was wearing during that parade incident. And then in the close proximity to that sweatshirt was the other sandal, which was the left-footed sandal, which was a blue slide with a Milwaukee Brewers logo album that was somewhat worn. Match description of the one that we also found on by 322 Maple. All right, sir, I'm going to uh, display on your monitor Exhibit 96. Go ahead. Do you see Exhibit 96? Not yet. Okay. There we go. All right, do you recognize what is portrayed in Exhibit 96? Yes. What is that? Objection leading. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. That is the children's playoffs where I found the gray hooded sweatshirt and the left footed blue sandal. All right. Do you believe the uh, photograph is a true and accurate depiction of the yard and uh, item that you described for us when you saw it that afternoon? Objection is speculative. Overruled the witness may answer. Uh, yes, it was. All right, we're going to go on to 97. What do we see in 97, sir? That is the gray hooded sweatshirt with a multicolored design or logo that I located. In the playhouse? Correct, in the playhouse. Okay. Do you believe this is a true and accurate uh, depiction as you observe the uh, events 
on uh, November 23 of 21. <coughs> Objection, speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, it is. All right, and then 98, please. Please describe. Yeah, uh, the, th this picture is the, obviously the gray hooded sweatshirt that I just talked about, and then also the other left footed blue sandal with the Milwaukee Brewers logo, alone that was worn. Is this the position of these items as you found them, sir? Yes, it was. And do you believe this uh, photograph is true and accurate as it's presented here today? Objection, leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. Uh, move to admit 96, 97, and 98, and permission to publish, Your Honor. Exhibits 96, 97, and 98 are all received, and permission to publish is granted as to each. And if the jury would please let me know when the monitors and the jury box also display what's on the large screen. Thank you. Go ahead. All right, Officer Becker, could you please circle uh, for the jury the children's playhouse that you've been describing for us in 96? Yes. <coughs> Thank you. I'm not requesting permission to capture that yarn. I'd like to move on to 97. <coughs> Oops, there's 97. Okay. And uh, where's the, uh, this is a close up of that same playhouse? Yes. Do you see the sweatshirt in this image, sir? Objection leading. Overruled, do you may answer? Yes, I do. Please circle it. Are you able to see the sandal in this photograph? No, I'm not. Okay. And then uh, we'll move on to 98, please. And those are the uh, two items together in the top portion of the playhouse, is that right? Yes, that is. All right. Now I'm going to show you these uh, physical items. Please, Deputy, if you would assist me again. Number 84. Do you recognize item number 84, sir? Yes. What is that? Objection leading. Oh, overruled. I'm sorry, what was the number again? 84. All right. Go ahead, you may answer, sir. Yes, this was the gray hooded sweatshirt that I located in the children's playhouse. All right. And 85. Please identify. This is the uh, other sandal, which was a left-footed uh, blue sandal slide uh, with the Milwaukee Brewer logo that was also located in the Children's Playhouse. Your Honor, uh, permission to admit, or excuse me, move to admit uh, 84 and 85. Objection, relevancy. Overruled. Exhibits 84 and 85 are both received. And I'd like to ask, uh, with the court's permission, if 84 can be published by the officer standing up and holding up uh, 84 for the jury to view. Objection, relevancy. Permission granted. So please hold up the sweatshirt, yeah. sir. Objection noted. Yes. The record to reflect the officer stood up in the jury box. He is holding the exhibit um, between his waist and forehead. That's the full length of a sweatshirt, and he has uh, passed it from right to left of his body in front of the jury. Thank you. And then if you would do the same thing, please, sir, you could set that one down, and if you could hold up 84 and 85, one in each hand, and uh, display those for the jury, if that's okay, Your Honor? Go ahead. I'm sorry, 85 and 86. Objection. Your objection's noted. Go ahead. The uh, witness is standing up still in the witness box. He is holding... Um, each one of those exhibits, which I believe is 85 and 86, 
one in each hand at shoulder height, and he turned a bit from right to left in front of the jury. Thank you, sir. You may sit, or you may sit down. Specialist Becker, did you check with the homeowner to make sure that the property you just displayed did not belong to the homeowner? Objection, speculative. I'll overrule the witness may answer. I personally did not. Some, somebody else may have. <coughs> and how about the uh, sandal in the by the cyclone fence on the ground? Did uh, officers check with the homeowner at that residence as well? Objection, speculative. You know. Overruled. If he knows, the witness may answer. I do not know if I didn't personally. Okay. Thank you, sir. I don't have any other questions. All right. Any cross for this witness? Yes, just one second. <coughs> Do you want the item still up by the witness, or can they be taken back to this, uh, or actually brought to my clerk since they're now evidence? Oh, you can take them back to the clerk. All right, the bailiff would bring them to the clerk, please. And then when you're ready. Uh, you testified earlier in questioning. Well, rather, let me let me back up. You said the name of the alleged suspect when questioned about uh, the alleged suspect fleeing from the vehicle. At that time, did you know? the name of the alleged suspect? Yes, we did. And how did you obtain that information? From the uh, detectives working the case. So you yourself didn't know until you were told. Would that be fair to say? Uh, I was part of the part of the brief, so I, I knew too. So you knew before you were briefed? Yes. So you knew before you were briefed, then why did you have to be briefed about that information? Just the gatherings, we, we briefed every morning and the gatherings from uh, the day before what we were all gonna do and stuff like that and what the detectives, every detective was working something different. So that's, uh, we just kind of gathered as a group like we do every morning and discuss what we all were gathered, or what we all saw and- Were you yeah. a part of the investigation uh, the night of the incident? Y yes, I was. And what was your detail, uh, uh, what was your role in the investigation the night of the incident? Well, I was activated for, for our SWAT team. I'm part of the, our Waukesha Police Department SWAT team. So we were activated at that time. So I was assisting in that matter for, at the time being, about this, the parade incident due to the fact of all the injuries and victims and unknown suspects at the time we got activated for our SWAT team. And you, you said unknown suspects, what do, what do you mean? At the time of the incident, we didn't know exactly who the suspects were, if there was one or two at the time. So this was all really fresh information that we received that night. So we got activated right away. So is it possible that you didn't receive uh, information of the alleged defendant until that evening? I do not recall when exactly we found out who our main suspect was. In reference to the sweatshirt that you observed in the 
children's playpen. Do you have any information of how that got there? Not exactly, no, because I didn't follow the footsteps of Jarrell Brooks at night. And seeing as how that you were uh, actively investigating that portion of the investigation, why did you not ask the homeowners if the items belonged to them? I didn't. I, I did not ask them. Um, I located it, and then it was turned over to more of the detectives that were handling the case. The question was why. Contact. Why didn't you ask the homeowners? I don't know. I just didn't. So it would be fair to say you didn't know who the items belonged to at that point? Fair enough, yeah. reference to uh, and the word you use was uh, belief you made reference to belief that the alleged suspect jumped the fence and I guess that would refer to where the slide as you referred it to was found um, how did you come to the determination that a fence was jumped during my training experience, uh, my main job role as a warrant specialist, I go out and track a lot of suspects down. Um, and a lot of times those suspects also flee on me uh, where I have to get in a foot pursuit with them. Um, there's been multiple times where suspects jump over fences um, to try to get away from police. So that's why I came to that conclusion just during my training and experience. Did you chase any suspects during your investigation? No, I did not. So it would be fair to say that you don't know for sure if any suspect jumped the fence. That is fair enough, but just during my training experience, that's what I believe may have happened. So it would be fair to say you weren't sure exactly. I guess you could say I wasn't 100% sure. And you, you testified earlier, uh, and I don't want to misquote you, I, I think it was some question of uh, determining the distance. I don't know if that was in reference to where the vehicle was found and where the, the items that you found were, were located. Is, was that the distance that was being referred to? Yes, I believe so. Thanks for that clarification. I didn't want to misquote you. Um, how were you exactly able to determine the exact distance of that? I wasn't able to. I think I may have said it. it's a rough estimate or approximate. So it would be fair to say you don't know for sure the distance? No, I do not know for sure the exact distance. Did you at any time see anyone, I guess I will refer to alleged suspects, did you at any time see any alleged suspects drop any items? No, I didn't. Did you see any alleged suspects remove any items? No, I did not. And you stated that your uh, 
search investigation was the the next morning? It was uh, November 23rd, 2021. And do you recall when that part of your investigation ended? Uh, I would have to uh, it'd be an approximate guess. I don't know how long we were out there exactly. It was that morning and then probably early afternoon, I'm guessing. And was that the state of your part in the investigation after you completed the investigation part on the 23rd of November 2021? Yes, that is correct. At any time after that, did you follow up with uh, your part of the investigation where, uh, where it was positioned in the, in, in the investigation in full? No, everything was turned over that day that I found the items to our forensics unit at the Waterfall Police Department where they handled the custody of the evidence. Uh, were you ever after that date um, followed up with by any law enforcement after that initial date? I don't really understand what you're saying. Uh, after, after your part of the investigation was completed on that day, the 23rd of November, 2021, did any law enforcement officers follow up with you about your part in the investigation? Not that I recall. And you said you turned the items over to a crime lab or? Uh, no, it was a criminal evidence and forensics unit of the Washtenaw Police Department, specifically Specialist Schmidt. And from that point, do you know what happened to the items? No, I do not. Do you know if any uh, procedure, once you turn over the items in, well, I believe you said the, can you say it again? I'm sorry. Criminal the evidence. Yeah. Criminal evidence. Forensic criminal standard. evidence. Uh, is there any procedure after that uh, in reference to the items? Like what may be, what may be done to the items? Yeah, they would place them into inventory at the Waukesha Police Department. So that's Specialist Schmidt's primary uh, job role at the Waukesha Police Department. So once you turn over the items, that's pretty much the end of, of your part of it. Yes.
be fair to say that uh, these items have been been kept for quite quite a while now. Would, you, would that be fair to say? Yes. Um, is it, are items usually kept for this length of time in in investigations? Yes, typically yes, till the case is over. So the, it isn't unusual in, in any way to see items kept roughly a year or so. No, that's not unusual, especially if it's evidence of a crime. And what usually happens to the items after the investigation is complete? You would have to ask the uh, Criminal Investigations Division, especially Schmidt that handles that those types of cases, I don't know what, how they release that, those items. So you're not sure to your, to your best of your knowledge, you're not sure. No, I'm not. Do you recall making a, a report in this matter? Yes, I do. And did you write it yourself or was it typed by someone else? Or? No, I believe I wrote my own report. And you stated that this was what would be called a canvas search team? Yes, that's correct. And you stated uh, or made reference to it being like a SWAT team? No, I recall that you asked what I did the prior day of the, the parade incident. Now, just advise you that I was activated for our SWAT team that day of the parade incident, the actual day. The items that I located on the canvas search team was on the November 23rd. So, in reference to the SWAT team uh, statement, what do you mean by SWAT team? Our tactical unit at the Washington Police Department. And what do you mean by canvas search team? Can you explain what exactly is a canvas search team? That is just a group of individuals that we had in our criminal investigations divisions. It was a detective specialist. There might have been some officers too. Uh, uh, gathered as a group, I think there's about 10 of us, and we searched the area to try looking for items. And do you wear uh, regular law enforcement gear or is there any change in the gear? Yeah, regular regular uh, law enforcement gear, so that I wear day to day every day. To the best of your knowledge, did you yourself file any claims in this matter? No, I did not. You know of anyone who filed any claims in this matter? No. Have you at any time saw or read a complaint in this matter? No. And do you recall who you who you were subpoenaed by to testify in this matter? Yeah, State of Wisconsin. And who do you refer to when you say State of Wisconsin? Uh, District Attorney's Office, Waukesha County District Attorney's Office. Do you recall whose name was on the subpoena? I do not recall it at the paperwork. 
so to the best of your knowledge with the state of Wisconsin be the plaintiff in this matter? Yes. And do you see the state of Wisconsin plaintiff in court today? Objection. Grounds. Proper vague question. Sustained as in the form of the question. Is the plaintiff present in court today, to your knowledge? Objection. Grounds. Relevant, legally inaccurate statement, Your Honor. Sustained for both reasons. Do you recall having any personal interactions with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Sustained as in the form of the question. Have you ever been contacted by the plaintiff in this matter? Same objection. Grounds. Sustained as in the form of the question. If you were to see the plaintiff, state of Wisconsin, will you be able to identify him? Objection. Argumentative. Grounds. Sustained as in the form of the question. <coughs> Would you classify the plaintiff state of Wisconsin as a human being or an entity? Objection. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Not relevant. fair to say this isn't your first time during your career testifying in any type of criminal matter? Yes. Yes, as in? I have testified. Testified before. So it would be fair to assume that you understand plaintiffs and defendants, correct? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Sustained. Not relevant. <clears throat> Are you aware that only a living human being can be, bring a claim against a defendant? Objection. Irrelevant. Grounds. Argumentative. Grounds. Sustained for those reasons and as to the form of the question. <coughs> to the best of your knowledge, who can bring a claim against an alleged defendant? Objection. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Not relevant. No further questions. Thank you, sir. Any redirect? No redirect of this officer, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Sir, you may step down. Thank you. I could start um, with another officer, but I don't think I'll complete his testimony. Um, what I'd like to do at this point is advise the jury about what is to happen next. I'm advised that everything is ready to go. <coughs> so, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will now be taken to a garage attached to the Waukesha County Courthouse to view the vehicle recovered by the Waukesha Police Department. You will be taken to the garage by the jury bailiffs. During your trip to and from the garage, or while there, you are not to discuss this case with anyone. While at the garage, you are not to talk, and no one is to talk to you about the case except the judge. You are to remain with the other jurors. You are not to conduct an independent investigation now or at any time during the trial. The court is taking the jury to the garage to provide the jury with an opportunity to view the vehicle as it is not possible to bring the vehicle into the courtroom. Other than the vehicle, anything you see there is not evidence in the case and should not be considered as evidence. At this time, please rise for the jury. And the jury bailiffs will wait until further instructed as to when to bring them over.
question was asked about whether they could bring notebooks, and I instructed that they should not. All right, thank you. Be seated. Um, we will be in recess while uh, the court and the parties uh, participate or at least observe the jury view. And given that it's 1135, unless something unanticipated happens that I would need to put on the record right away, then we also will be taking um, the lunch break after the jury view. Um, I believe we'll be over there for... I don't think, let me put it this way, I don't think the process is going to take more than a half hour. I think it will take much less than that. I think what might take more is just getting all of us there and situated. Um, but let's say it takes to us to noon, we'll take an hour for lunch. So I would expect the parties to be back here um, at one. All right, thank you everyone. <laughs>